Hey guys, welcome back to another Daily Hope Devo. I'm Rob, high school pastor here at North Coast Calvary. Today we're in 2 Kings chapter 18. And hey, I just want to start this video by, by kind of addressing the elephant in the room. And the answer is yes, my hair is actually blue right now. And uh, if you're wondering why, it's because we just got back from high school summer camp and a couple students have been wanting to dye my hair for a long time. And you know, slowly I caved and uh, it was, you know, ended up being a great bonding experience and uh, just an op awesome opportunity to connect with them. And, and you know, I, I kind of secretly wanted to dye my hair anyways, but uh, anyways, uh, it would not be the first time actually that I, I've altered my physical appearance at a summer camp, believe it or not. Uh, eighth grade year going into ninth grade on a dare, I shaved my head and uh, it was not a good look for me. Um, but uh, I, all I know is you know, for the next two, three years at youth group, I was just known as the kid that shaved his head. Uh, and that was that was how people knew me. Um, but uh, but the reason I share that story with you guys is as I read through Second Kings chapter eighteen, um, the question the Lord kept bringing to mind is that, you know how do you want to be remembered? Um, what what's the legacy that you want to leave behind? Because unfortunately or fortunately, uh, people are going to remember you by what you do, both the good and the bad. Um, and as we read 2 Kings chapter 18, uh, we read about King Hezekiah, and uh, Hezekiah left an amazing legacy. 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 4 and 5, I'm sorry, verse 5 and 6 says this, Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what he was remembered by. There was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before or after his time. He remained faithful to the Lord in everything. He carefully obeyed all the commands the Lord had given Moses. Like that's how I would want to be remembered. Somebody who faithfully sought after the Lord wholeheartedly. Um, and you know, what I love about Hezekiah is his dad was the polar opposite. King Ahaz was an, known for being an evil king who um, actually shut the, the doors to the temple so that the people of Judah weren't able to worship the Lord. That was this guy's dad. And yet Hezekiah made the choice to seek after the Lord with all of his heart, and he was zealous about it. He was passionate about it. I mean, he ripped down idols. He tore down pagan shrines. He re reopened the doors to the temple that his dad had shut. Um, and one of the most interesting things about Hezekiah's life, and this is what I kind of wanted to, to land on for this Devo, is what he did in verse, uh, verse 5, sorry, verse 4. Um, at the end of it, he broke up the bronze serpent. That Moses had made because the people of Israel had been offering sacrifices to it. The bronze serpent was called Nehushtan. I don't know if I said that right, but if you guys remember uh, back in, in Exodus, um, there were uh, when the Israelites were in the desert, um, snakes had actually entered the camp and began to to bite the Israelite people. Um, you know, and snakes bite, obviously, you know, injecting venom, and the people became sick and you know were dying and. Um, and so the Lord told Moses to actually construct this, this bronze serpent on a pole and raise it up. And then he told the people, hey, when you look at this bronze serpent, um, you guys are going to be healed. And uh, that was a representation, right, a foreshadowing of, of what would happen when Jesus was raised up on the cross. All of us who were sick and dying in our sin, in our venomous sin, um, when we look to the cross, we also are healed. Um, so it was something originally for the nation of Israel that was meant to foreshadow and represent Christ, to bring the people closer to God. Um, but... Over the course of generations, it's interesting, but what had happened is that bronze serpent, um, the thing that was meant to bring people closer to the Lord had actually become an idol. It had become something that they that they worshiped, that they looked to, that they revered, that they glorified. Um, that actually wasn't, um, at this point, I mean, it was something that, that actually brought them away from the Lord. It was something that in and of itself had no power at all. And uh, when I read this verse, I, I was honestly, um, I, I was pretty convicted. And I had to wrestle with the Lord because the question I felt like God was asking me was, man, are there, are there things in my life, are there bronze serpents in my life that might have at one point represented something that brought me closer to the Lord, um, but have now become an idol? Have now become something that, you know, again, might have at one point been a good thing that brought me closer to the Lord, but now it actually is, 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 is the opposite of that. And um, just being honest and vulnerable, I mean, the answer was, was yes. 
for me, um, as I thought about women, what are the bronze serpents in my life? Um, I would honestly say my occupation is one of them. And I know it's really easy as we go through life to, to identify with what we do. Um, and for me, you know, unfortunately, that, that's true sometimes. Even in ministry, I love ministry. Um, I, I, this is, I fully believe this is what the Lord made me for. This is what God put Rob on this earth to do. But um, if I'm not careful, something that is a good thing, something that, you know, can bring me closer to the Lord can actually do the opposite. It can become something that I, I worship. It, it can become something that I, I give myself to, I submit myself to. Um, and even though it's about the Lord, I, I, it's very easy to do it apart from the Lord. And so I, I had this moment as I was reading the, the text, I just said, you know, Lord, forgive me. God, you are the first and foremost in my heart, Lord. You are the only one I want to worship, God. And may ministry, may my occupation be a tool that I use, God, to glorify you. And so my question for, you know, you watching this today is, man, what are the bronze serpents in your life? Are there things in your life that God might have used for a season to bring you closer to him and no longer serve that purpose? Are there things in your life that are, you know, were maybe a great thing at one point that represented God for you and brought you closer to God, but are now actually doing the opposite and pulling you away from him? If there are, I mean, just in the quietness of your heart, just cry out to the Lord. Um, the Lord's kindness leads us to repentance when we just say, God, I'm so sorry, Lord, the things that might have been a great thing in my life, Lord, the things that at one point might have been a tool to bring me closer to you are no longer that, God. And I want to give myself, all of me, my heart, body, mind, soul, fully to you right now, God. Lord, can you forgive me and draw me close to you? Um, just know that First John 1, 9, if, he, if we confess our sins, he's faithful to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And we can just come back into his arms um, and realign ourselves with, uh, with who he's created us to be um, and reorient our hearts so that God himself and God alone is sitting on the throne. Um, that's my hope and my prayer for, for all of us today. So thanks for watching. Love you guys. And uh, I'll see you soon.